Welcome to the Oasis. My name is Mike and today I'm going to be reviewing the HTC Vive wireless adapter. So as you'll know if you follow the channel I got to experience the wireless adapter back at Gamescom during the Arizona Sunshine LB experience and I was super impressed on how it performed on the show floor. But can I replicate that experience at home? Well stay tuned to find out. Thanks to HTC for providing the wireless adapter kit and the Pro module kit for this review. Now I think it's important you guys and girls know this, I got this hardware for free. I'll always disclose this when this happens, but don't worry, I'll always be upfront and honest with my opinions on this equipment. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you what comes in the box, how to set it up, and then finally my review. I'll put timestamps in the description down below so you can jump straight to the section that you're interested in the most. I hope you guys and girls enjoy this one, and without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, so first up, let's see what's in the box and talk about the price. Now this kit is 299 US dollars for the wireless adapter kit, and that comes with everything you need for the original Vive. The core kit comprises of the wireless adapter, which is compatible with the Vive and Vive Pro, a battery with clip and USB cable, a PCIe card, a wireless link box that comes with a six foot cable, and the original Vive cables. As this system uses a PCIe card, you'll need to ensure you have a 1x slot spare on your motherboard. Unfortunately though, this will rule out people with laptops. Also, I've heard that people with AMD Ryzen processors are reporting issues, so please be aware of that before jumping in if you're in the AMD camp. If you have a Vive Pro, you will need the additional Pro kit, and that's gonna cost you an extra $65. And in the Pro kit, you get a DisplayPort cable, replacement padding for the back of the headset, and a Vive Pro cradle mount. So let's jump into the installation. I'm pleased to report that the installation is a breeze, but I'll cover it briefly here. First thing you wanna do is put the battery on charge so you can get that thing juiced up while you get everything else ready. Next, power off your PC and switch off the power supply. Make sure you ground yourself and install the PCIe card in a 1X slot. If a 1X slot isn't available on your motherboard, you can install it in a 4X slot. Next, you're gonna to wanna to connect the wireless link box to the PCIe card and mount it so it's pointing at your play space. Grab your Vive and remove the interface to remove the original cable. Then you want to install the wireless adapter and the padding on the headset. If you've got a Vive Pro, you're gonna to need to swap out the cradle plate using a screwdriver. Next, just download and install the software. And once that's installed, make sure you reboot your PC. Then the final step is the fun part. We get to test it out. I got to test out the Vive wireless adapter with a bunch of different games, including Creed, Superhot, Twilight Path, and Beat Saber. So let's jump to my conclusion. I have to say I was really impressed with how quick and easy the installation was. It took around 30 minutes in total, and that was it. Unlike the TPCast, which took the same amount of time to get set up, but hours and hours of troubleshooting to get a good experience. The Vive solution just works straight out of the box. Also, unlike the experience I had with the TPCast, there's no obvious degradation of the image that you see in the headset, and there's no latency. Using the TPCast with the Oculus Rift, you get a slight cropping of the field of view, and you lose your microphone if you're not using Open TPCast. In terms of weight, the Vive wireless adapter is slightly heavier than the TPCast module, however, the battery is much lighter. Of course, that's because it's a much smaller capacity. I ran the Vive wireless adapter for around two and a half hours before the battery died, and it will take about six hours to fully recharge again. Just like the TPCast, you get no warning when the battery is about to die on you, and the headset just turns off, so be aware of the length of your playtimes. 
If you do want a spare battery for those longer gaming sessions, it's going to cost you an additional $60, and they recommend that you use an official Vive one. I tried it with two battery packs here I had lying around, but they just simply didn't work. I did some research though, and apparently if you find a battery pack that supports Quick Charge 3.0, it will work, but just be wary of cheap batteries, as it could cost you more in the long run. During my hours of testing, I had a couple of occasions where the signal was weakened, and you can see that represented in the headset as the view becomes a little bit pixelated. Thankfully, this lasted just a matter of seconds and only occurred twice during my playtesting. The Vive wireless adapter features a lighter single cable running from the battery to the headset, and the battery has a clip, meaning you can easily attach it to a pocket or a belt. The TP-Cast has a chunkier cable and uses a belt of its own, so it isn't quite as convenient as using the Vive. The replacement padding, I have to say, was a bit of a disappointment. It just acts like a huge sponge which soaks up sweat. Especially when I was playing games like Creed and I was sweating a lot, I'd come back to the headset an hour later and it would still be damp to the touch. I would have preferred a pleather pad or something similar to roll the sweat off rather than soak it up like this, especially for the amount of money that you're paying. I also experienced some audio desync when recording content using the Vive Pro's onboard microphone. Although to be fair, I wouldn't recommend recording videos using that microphone as it just sounds terrible. It was just a little bit out of sync and I was able to sync it back up in post and more testing is really required to work out exactly what happened there. Overall, this is a better product than the TP-Cast and if you're looking for a wireless solution for the Vive, this is the product that I'd recommend. If you own a Rift, I tested this product with it, but sadly I couldn't get it to work. So the TP-Cast is still your only option. Okay guys and girls, so there we have it. That's the HTC Vive wireless adapter. Now I've said it before and I'll say it again, being wireless in VR is awesome. The feeling of being able to freely move around your play space is great and you don't get that immersion breaking moment where you're tangled up with the cable. Now I've been using the TP-Cast with the Oculus Rift for some time now and I use it every single day. I just couldn't go back to using a wired headset anymore. However, I could never really recommend that product as it was such a complicated mess to set up and troubleshoot and really you had to use third party open TP-Cast software to get the best experience out of it. Now thankfully that's simply not the case with the Vive Pro wireless adapter kit that I've got here today. It just works straight out the box and you don't have any issues at all. Now the biggest bone of contention I would imagine will be the price. It is still pricey for what you get, but if you've been sitting on the fence for a wireless adapter for your Vive for some time now, this is the only wireless kit I would recommend. Sadly, this kit doesn't work with the Oculus Rift. I did actually try it as I was super intrigued to see if it would work with both systems and then I could just swap the module over and use both systems when I want to swap between them. But unfortunately, that's not the case. If you've got an Oculus Rift, the only solution right now is still the TP-Cast. So there we have it, guys and girls. I hope you've enjoyed this review. If it's helped you out, please let me know in the comments down below. I'd also like to know if you've had experience with the Vive wireless adapter and your thoughts in the comments down below down below as well. Leave a like if you like the video, make sure you're subscribed for all my future content, and as always, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.